we're going to factor by grouping. You need to have four terms if you're going to group. So here we have four terms. And you can see what the answer is going to be. There is not a GCF for all four terms. Now I go on to step two, which is to put parentheses around the first two terms and parentheses around the second two terms and make sure there's a plus in the middle. You must have a plus in the middle. Okay, now step three. Factor each set of parentheses by GCF. Factor each set of parens, that's kind of an unofficial abbreviation for parentheses. Factor each set of parens by GCF. OK, well here. We have R times R times R minus 2 times R times R. OK, the GCF. The GCF for these two terms is an R. Just one R. <gasps> no, there are two R's in each term. How about that? So our GCF is R squared, R times R. So our GCF is going to be R times R, which is R squared. Then I'm going to mark through the circled R's so I can see better what the leftovers are. I have an R left over here and a minus and a two. So I have just factored the first set of parentheses by GCF. Be very careful to never lose that plus sign in the middle. Plus, plus. Now we're going to do the same thing to the second set of parentheses. Now I know that four goes evenly into eight. So when I break this down, I'll leave this four R minus two times four. Notice if I put the four behind, then both of these are positive. So I can pull out a positive GCF for this set of parentheses. Less complication. Four and four. So we're going to pull the GCF out front mark through the circled, here their numbers, and then I can see pretty clearly what my leftovers are. R minus two. Okay, we're ready for step four.
factor the entire expression, the whole thing, See, can I fit that in? G, C, okay, okay, okay. All right, fine. By G, C, F. Well, what do you mean? Notice that there's a plus sign in the middle that separates this side of the plus sign from this side of the plus sign. Both sides contain parentheses R minus two. Parentheses R minus two is now the GCF. So I pull out parentheses R minus two to the front. I go ahead and mark through it so I don't write it again. And then I write the leftovers R squared plus four. And that is a factorized version of the original polynomial. How do I know? Well, it looks to me like we're going to have to check it by multiplying. So check. I'm going to take that R and multiply it by the second set of parentheses. And minus two. And multiply by the second set of parentheses. Distribute. Distribute. That'll be R to the third power because it's R times R times R. Plus. 4r. Now we've got minus 2 times positive r squared. That's minus 2r squared. And minus 2 times plus 4 is minus 8. So now all we have to do is write this in descending order. r to the third minus 2 r squared plus 4r minus 8. And yes, that's exactly what we started with. So that means, that means that step 4 is the correct factorization. Are you going to have to remember all these steps? Yes. Yes, write them on your brain. Better yet, put them in your notes. They'll be in my notes, but you'll learn it better if you do it. All right, now. Life is about to get complicated. Is that fun or is that fun? OK, don't run away. Here we go. Step one, check and see if there's a GCF in all four terms. 
There's a seven in this term and in that term. There are y's in that term and that term and that term, but not in this term. And this term has a five, that term has a five, but these two don't. So step one, step one, no GCF, four, all four terms. Now I want you to watch carefully what I do. Here's step two. I'm going to take the first two terms and put them in parentheses. And I'm going to take the second two terms, whoa, whoa, and put them in parentheses, including the minus sign. I'm going to put a plus sign right here. Because there really is a plus sign there. And now I'm going to put a plus sign. In the middle. Normally, I mean normally, it's not normally, but in reality, remember when we were talking about polynomials, this polynomial would be written like this. When we were talking about how plus signs separate terms, only plus signs separate terms. When there's a minus sign, it goes with the number behind it and gives you a negative 35. So this plus sign is really there. That's what you have to do when you have a minus in the middle. Let me erase the stupid little mark I just put there. OK. Now, step three. Factor each set of parentheses by GCF, just like before. And I'm going to run out of room again. OK, I'm not going to play this time. By GCF. There. OK, we're going to do that. I've got 7 times Y times Y times Y plus 1 times Y times y. And I notice immediately that I have two y's here and two y's here. That's my GCF for this set of parentheses. OK, so I take the Y squared. OK, I'm going to mark through. What I circled. You don't really have to do that. It's just a convenient way to make sure. To make it easier to see the leftovers. Which also is not a technical mathematical term but they are leftovers. Seven Y plus one.
Isn't that supposed to be minus one? No. Oh. oh, no, no, no. But thank you. Always say something. Thank you very much. That was a good thing. OK. Now comes. What you just finished learning. This is a little polynomial, a binomial. The leading term is negative 35 Y. You have a negative leading term. So your GCF is going to have to be negative. So now I'm going to write this out. Negative five times seven y plus negative five times one. See, when I take out the negative five, it's nice to have a one there rather than having to remember it. Uh, negative five is going to be our GCF. Negative five, negative five. I put that in front. And then I mark, I mark through what I circled. And I am going to be left with seven Y plus one. And now a good way to check yourself and see if you made a mistake here is just to mentally distribute the negative five to both of these terms. Negative five times seven is negative 35 times y. That would give you negative, 30, uh, negative 35 y. Negative five times positive one is negative five. Okay, so, so far we're doing it right. Now step four. I factor the entire expression by GCF. Factor entire expression by G, C, F. And when you've done everything correctly to this point, what's in parentheses will be the GCF. They will be exactly alike. So, 7Y plus 1 and then I mark through them. That is the terms that are in parentheses. And then times y squared minus 5. Plus minus is minus. But how do I know I'm right? Doggone it, got to check it. I could be wrong. I can always be wrong. And unfortunately, I often am wrong. Y squared minus five. All right, I take the first term from there, multiply it by the second set of parentheses. Then I take the second term, a plus and a one, times the second set of parentheses. So this will be 7y times y squared, that will be 
y to the third, and 7y times minus 5 is minus 35y plus 1 times y squared is y squared. 1 times minus 5 is minus 5. Now all I have to do is get this in descending order. 7y to the third plus y squared minus 35y minus 5. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, step 4 is our correct factorization of this polynomial right here. Let's get to the last problem, which is like this one. I think it's the last one. It's not. No, let's do the last problem because this one has bigger numbers and W's. Ugh. Okay, so. Six W cubed plus eighteen W minus fourteen W. Four, uh, so I wrote fifteen. See, fourteen, fourteen W squared minus 42. OK. Now there's a reason they wrote it this way. So we're going to stick with it. And do the following. Six W cubed plus 18 W plus negative 14 W squared plus negative 42. And then I'm going to put parentheses around the first two terms and parentheses around the second two terms. But I suspect without knowing, because I haven't done it, that if I were to put this in descending order, we could still get the correct factorization. But we only have a few minutes left, so let's do it. Okay, now I am going to write this like this. Um, 6 times 3 times W times W times W plus, no, see, I know I'm in a hurry. Don't get in a hurry. Don't be fooled. The 6 times 3 goes over here. 6 times 3 times W. All right, each term contains a six. And each term contains a W. So six W is my GCF for this set of parentheses. Six W. And boom, boom, boom. Boom. We are left with W times W, that's W squared, plus 3. 
Now over here, this is the highest degree term in the set of parentheses, and it's negative. Its leading term is negative, therefore we have to have a negative GCF coming out of here. So let's do it, let's do it now. Negative seven times two times W squared plus negative seven times six. I did this wrong, how do I know? Because two will go into six, there's still a two. That means negative 14 should have been my GCF. So I'm gonna go back and make amends. Get rid of the whole thing and do it again. If you're still left with a GCF in here, you've got to pull that out too. So, let me see. 14 times 3 is 42. Okay, so now, this is negative 14 W squared plus negative 14 times positive three. Negative times positive is negative. Now negative 14 is my GCF. Negative 14, negative 14, I pull it out front. Negative 14, times, mark, mark, W squared plus three. Now, my in the parentheses, in both sets of parentheses, I have W squared plus three, which means now that becomes the GCF of the entire expression. So I write down W squared plus three parentheses, six W minus 14. And so I'm gonna do a quick check to make sure that's right. Or, uh, uh, no, it's not, it's not, it's not. Look at that, I was gonna get it wrong. I would have checked that and gotten the right answer and thought I was right. What's wrong with this? Look in these parentheses that I just made. But two goes into both of these numbers. I have to factor everything down to its most basic parts. So that would have gotten me a wrong answer. So now I have to do it right. W squared plus three, okay, times two times three times W minus seven times two. There's a two in both of these. What am I gonna do with it? This is what I'm gonna do with. I am going to write the two out front and then mark through these. And I will be left with W squared plus three times three W minus seven. Now that's a good thing. But notice this, checking would have gotten me the, the problem I started with. And I could have honestly put the previous answer, this W squared plus three times six W minus 14 
in the answer box and it would have been wrong because I did not take the two out of here. So always remember that. You know what I did wrong? Here's what I did wrong. I skipped step one. Step one, two goes into each of these numbers. If I had pulled a two out at the very beginning, this entire problem would have been easier. This is two times three. This is two times nine. This is, well, minus seven times two. And this is minus, ah, uh, ah, uh, 14 times three. No, no, no. Just do it, Barbara. 42. See, I can be as lazy as everybody else. 42 equals 2 times 21, and 21 is 3 times 7. Is that hard? Really? I'm yelling at myself at the moment. 3 times 2 times 7. Each of these terms has a positive 2. I could have pulled that 2 out to the front and then I would have had two times three W to the third plus nine W minus seven W squared minus three times seven, that would be minus 21. That would have been the problem we worked on and it would have been a little bit easier and we wouldn't have almost gotten caught with that happening at the end, because from the very beginning, two would have been brought out. That would have been the right way to do that. Look at this, look at this. The thing I don't like about tablets. Okay, that is it for today.